What's up, everybody? Today, we're going to talk about the Midwest Gaming Classic. If you're unfamiliar with MGC, it's a large game convention held every spring in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and features a giant game center with tons of free-play arcade machines, pinball games, and classic video games, a giant vendor hall, as well as tournaments, concerts, and more. I'm going to show you some footage from the show, and be sure to stay tuned to the end, and I'll show you all my pickups.
All right, now that you've seen some footage of the show, let me show you what I picked up in the vendor hall. Uh, so first of all, this was my ticket. Uh, you notice this says VIG, which stands for Very Important Gamer. It's a little silly, but uh, this year's badge was pretty cool. It looks like a Game Boy. And uh, my best friend and I have been going to the show for close to 10 years at this point. And for the last several years, we've done the VIG pass. Uh, this gives you full access to the Game Center on Friday night. Uh, allows you into the vendor room an hour early on Saturday and also grants you access to the after party Saturday evening as well as the full day on Sunday. So it's a little more expensive but it gives you essentially all access to all the different events at the show and also in recent years they've been giving out a free custom NES game that's exclusive to the show. So this year, uh, again hopefully there's not a glare here, but uh, it was called Chaos Between Realms and this is a complete in box NES game with a manual and a cartridge. So that was essentially the first pickup of the weekend. But I also, uh, in addition to this event t shirt, which you could see here with the dates for the 2023 show, I picked up two other t shirts because I really like this year's designs. Uh, so this one features the MGC logo on a TV with uh, several classic console controllers in the front. And this one features a uh, Game Boy and, or stylized Game Boy and several other stylized handhelds, uh, again with the MGC logo. Um, then I uh, went to several different vendors, but let me start with one of my favorite vendors. Uh, I unfortunately never seem to catch the name of the vendor, but every year they have bins full of items that are only a dollar each. So if you can manage to get there early, you can find some pretty cool stuff. So this year, um, from that booth, from the dollar bins, I got a official Nintendo Game Boy 4-player adapter, a wireless controller adapter for an original Xbox controller. I believe I have the exact controller that works with this, so this was a nice find. Um, got a small zippered Game Boy Advance storage pouch. Got the Steelbook for Resident Evil Village for a dollar. Got an unopened GoldenEye, uh, this would be the uh, Wii remake, GoldenEye 007 Cheater t-shirt that's still sealed in the package. You can see the uh, back of the Wii box there. Um, got a Nintendo Winter 2002 catalog that also randomly had some of the inserts for Mario 64 stuck in the front cover. Uh, but this is pretty cool because it features artwork from all of the Nintendo GameCube and Game Boy Advance games released back in 2002. So this is just kind of a fun piece of history here. Again, for a dollar. Got a set of Super Mario Brothers gadget deca uh, decals. And according to the back, or the front here, it has over 170 individual decals. Um, and this is new and sealed for a dollar. Got an Xbox One stress, con uh, stress ball. So it's very squishy. And then, um, so these, this one was on its own, but these two pieces were together in a bag. So this is two dollars altogether but it's the Acclaim double player system for NES. So it's a wireless controller um, and receiver, or a pair of wireless controllers and the receiver for NES for $2. So lots of cool stuff from them. And then after I picked up all of this stuff, I noticed at the front of their booth in a small bin, they had several um, Mario and Pokemon toys that were also only a dollar each. So I grabbed uh, the three starters from um, red and blue. So we have Bulbasaur, Squirtle, and Charmander. And these are actually uh, official Wicked Cool Toys figures from 2018. So only a dollar each on those. And then got the, um, it's kind of like a shiny, I don't know if it's hard to see, but it has kind of like a shiny coating uh, War Turtle. Again, a Wicked Cool Toys figure. And then the Interactive Eevee figure, which I believe normally sells for about $20 to $25, 
again for a dollar. Those were cool. Um, a few other things from that same vendor. Uh, now, these were not in the dollar bin, but they gave me a great deal nonetheless. Um, I got this official Rayman Raving Rabbids Wii controller charging stand. Um, and it did come with the power cord and some of the battery uh, battery packs. But this was, uh, I believe, $5. Uh, got one of the Worlds of Power Choose Your Own Adventure books. Uh, now, this one is book number five, based on Wizards and Warriors. And I believe this is one of the only books in the series I was missing. So this was a cool find. And it even still has the trading card, Unpunched. Um, got a small Club Mochi Mochi Super Mario hat. And the official Nintendo Power Player's Guide for Zelda Four Swords Adventures. Um, so I have been trying to collect all of these along with the Nintendo Power Magazine issues. And I'm down to maybe about a dozen more. Um, and this was one of them. So I got all of this together for, I believe, $20. Space, um, and then found the EV Build a Bear plush for a great price. Got a pair of Nintendo 3DS games. Um, nothing crazy, but Deer Drive Legends as well as Splinter Cell 3D. Got pretty good prices on these. Now that the uh, eShop is gone. Trying to get the last couple games I want before they get even more expensive. Then, uh, let's see. Got a few Nintendo Wii games. Got Dream Pinball. Luxor 3, which I was surprised when I opened it up, also has Luxor Pharaoh's Challenge. Um, it's pretty beat up, but two games for the price of one. It's never a bad thing. And then the original Sniper Elite. So uh, I'm not sure if you could see it behind me, but I have all of the sequels for PS4, but this first game was only released for Nintendo Wii and the original Xbox, and I love light gun games, so naturally I wanted to get the Wii version, which supports the Wii Zapper, and finally found a copy. Um, so the booth that I got these Wii games from also had a toy bag, and I was able to get a bundle deal. Um, so this has, uh, it's a lot of McDonald's toys, which aren't really anything too special, but it has a set of Pac-Man salt and pepper shakers, which I believe normally sell for about $15 on their own. It has a few, now these were just, um, candy tins, but still kind of cool display pieces. This is actually metal, both of these. And then there were, um, I believe it's just these three, um, some more Pokemon figures. So we have the uh, Snivy, two of the, and it's Evolution, as well as, uh, I believe that's Axew. And these, I think, were Jack's figures? Yep. Figures from uh, 2011. And aside from the other McDonald's toys, a lot of which I already have, there's an Excite truck vehicle. Now, I, if I remember correctly, I believe this was given away in Wendy's Kids Meals around the time uh, the Wii launched, but uh, I was living in Japan at the time, so I completely missed it. But uh, kind of a cool little collectible that you don't see very often. All right, let me put these back and then we can move on. All right, um, let's see. Okay, so this was all on Saturday, and uh, one more stack of purchases from Saturday. So I, for the last several years, have been trying to purchase every game published by Nintendo. So I have almost every game published in America, except for... Um, this, this would be up through the Wii U generation. I'm only missing, I believe, two or three games at this point. Uh, but when it comes to Japanese games, there's quite a few more that I'm missing. So, I found several of the educational games for Nintendo DS. Uh, these are all Japanese games. So, these first two are actually English training games. 
then there are two travel guides. Uh, this one is for China. This one is for America. And then a few kind of brain training style um, adult education games. So there were, what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven DS games. And then randomly, Mass Effect Legendary Edition for Xbox One. All of these were in a bin of games that were, I believe, $3 each or four for 10. So I got all eight of these games, including Mass Effect, for $20. Not bad at all. All right, uh, so that was the end of day one. And then at the after party, um, I'll try to throw a photo up here. Uh, the creator of Rampage was actually hosting a game that was kind of like beer pong, where you have to throw a ping pong ball into a cup. Uh, it wasn't full of beer, it was full of water. But in this case, it was set up on a small battlefield that was being used to promote the game General Chaos 2 which is the sequel to the original Sega Genesis game. Um, so in order to win the game, you were given six ping pong balls, and you had to sink at least two into any of the cups on the field. And by some miracle, I sunk my first two balls, and I won a General Chaos action figure. Um, sorry if there's a glare. It is still in the plastic here. Hopefully you can see it. But pretty cool for free. And then on Sunday, uh, when vendors are a little more willing to give you a better deal just to get rid of stuff, um, I picked up a, a few last-minute pickups. So, uh, from shout out to uh, this vendor here, Lost Joystick Network. Check them out. They gave me a great price on uh, this Japanese Super Famicom game I've been looking for. Uh, it's Mickey and Donald's Magical Adventure 3. Uh, you may be familiar with the first two games, which did come out in America for Super Nintendo, but this one was only released in Japan until it was eventually ported to Game Boy Advance, but I wanted to get the original. So they gave me a great deal on that, and even threw in a free copy of Super Mario Bros. 3 for Famicom. So again, shout out to Lost Joystick Network. Then, um, swung by a booth that I had looked at the previous day, but didn't end up buying anything from them at that time, but they, um, I don't know if I just didn't notice it or if they just put it out, but they had a giant box full of anime and sci-fi DVDs for a dollar each. So I went through and I found the entire series of an anime that I was interested in back in college. They're a little dirty. I didn't have time to clean them up yet. Uh, it's called Neo Ranga, and it's, uh, from what I remember, it was about kaiju. So got all six volumes, got the complete series of Stargate Infinity. This is the uh, animated series, which I have never seen. I've seen all of the other movies and live action shows, but not this one. And then uh, the first two seasons and the movie of Tripping the Rift, which uh, I've heard is a pretty funny CG sci-fi show. So again, those were, would have been a dollar each, but I also purchased this set of Super Mario Brothers 35th Anniversary t-shirts from them. So we have, a, uh, first off, the shirt from the original Super Mario Brothers. Um, if you can see the design at the bottom there, Super Mario Brothers 2. Super Mario Sunshine, New Super Mario Brothers U, that might be one of my favorite designs of all five, um, and then finally, uh, Super Mario 3D World. So these were originally available through the Nintendo online store around the time they were celebrating the uh, Mario 35th anniversary a couple years ago but I unfortunately missed out on them at the time, and all of these just happened to be my size, so I worked out a deal with them, got a discount on the lot of five shirts, and they threw in all 10 DVDs for free. So, very happy with that transaction. Okay, and one last batch of pickups. Now these are completely random, but I had 10 bucks cash left, 
and I figured I should get something weird. So at this uh, one booth near the far end of the vendor room, I noticed they had this Stephen King PC game I had never heard of, uh, but it wasn't priced, so I was thinking if it was maybe 5 to $10, I might pick it up just to see what it is. Um, however, when I went back on Sunday, they had two boxes full of PC games on the ground that just said, PC games, cheap. And I noticed, of all games in the world, they had Britney's Dance Beat for PC. Now, you're going to think I'm crazy for buying this, but I played this back on PS2 when I was in college, and it's strangely a lot of fun. I'm, I'm by no means a big fan of Britney Spears. I, I don't mind her music, but I don't really listen to it regularly. But as a fan of rhythm games, it's a good one. So they had this, and I, you know, I asked them, like, oh, you know, how much would this be? Like a buck or two? They're like, oh, no, we would want five. And I was like, ah, that's a little much. So they're like, okay, how about three? And I'm like, all right, let me see if I can, you know, put together a bundle here. So I grabbed that, and then uh, I found Midway Arcade Treasures, again for PC, as well as Tron 2.0. And then I went back over, and this was on a separate shelf with some higher price things. And I asked them, you know, how much this was. And I believe at first the guy said, oh, that one would be about 10 but again, I was down to my last $10, and I said, how about 10 for everything? And after a few minutes of consideration, they gave me the deal. So, um, pretty eclectic mix here. Again, Britney's Dance Beat, some classic arcade games, Tron, and then uh, what I can only assume is a horror game. But still, nice additions to the collection. It's always fun to have some weird, quirky stuff. So there you have it. That is everything I picked up at the show. Uh, hope you enjoyed the footage. Hope you liked some of my pickups. If uh, you know, feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions. Otherwise, um, I highly recommend checking out the show if you're in the area. And uh, please be sure to like and subscribe for future videos. And I will see you next time.